Are we right. coding along or just watching and listening? I feel like my audio might be screwed up. Can somebody say something, please? Howdy. I don't Hello. think you've been hearing us, man. Yeah, you're right. I'm yeah. not hearing anything. All right. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, your audio is screwed. That's why he's not answering anybody. Oh, there we go. I hear something now. Try again. Hello. Yep. Hello. Nothing. Hello. Hang on. Going back to the other one. Try again. Yeah. There we go. All right. I'll deal with that. That explains why you didn't answer any questions. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what questions did I skip? People were just wondering if we're going to code along or just watch. Oh. Um, a combination of both. So this first part, I don't want you to uh, code along with. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make something out of HTML, and I want to see if you can turn it into JSX. Yeah, yeah. All right, so welcome to Intro to React. So if I make some HTML page, Call it React to HTML. And um, I'm just going to do the, the JSX. -y. Well, now fuck it. I'll do the whole thing. So I make some HTML page. Inspired by Lynn, this will be cats. And it's going to have an unordered list of um, three cats. Um, cool, so here's my HTML page. If I serve this up, I should see something kind of like that. So I'm going to give you this HTML, and I want you to see if you can put this in a React app. So you can do this at a couple different levels. You can do it just JSX as is. You can try making components for those LIs. Um, work at your comfort level. I just want to see where everybody's at. Uh, if you can't get anything, that's completely fine too. Sorry, Lynn, I probably should have sourced cat names uh, from you. <laughs> Or I should have just gone with Bixby Mason Harmony. All right, there you go. Uh, HTML's in the chat. I'm gonna give you five minutes. Do your best to reactify that.
Minute and a half. All right, that's five minutes. Pencils down. Uh, please slack me what you have. Now, before you do it, please code fence it. Um, most of you are doing this, but triple ticks like that, uh, followed by your code, and the triple ticks. If it looks like that, it comes through in a way that I can actually read. Cool, fire it off. Great work, Greg. Okay, cool. I think I have an idea of about where we're at. So let's walk through it. So uh, don't follow along with this. We're going to do it again. So I'm going to make a new React app with Create React App. And we'll call it 
um, cats2. Go into cats2. Oops, I don't have a create rack app right now. They just upgraded Node last week. Um, so I'm going to install create React app. Let's try that again. There we go. So like a much, much lighter version of Rails, we got a whole bunch of stuff pre-configured and magically set up for us. That's a good thing. Oh, there we go. And I'm back. Oh, by the way, you'll keep getting these, these like low severity vulnerabilities. That's a kind of new thing, like in the last year in NPM. Um, don't overthink it. Like, I'm not going to fix that vulnerability right now, and I don't think you should either. All right, so and I'm going to go into that cats app that I made. And let's do a quick tour of what's in here. Node modules, this is just like our installed gems, except Ruby installs them uh, like globally for your entire computer and your like .rvm folder. Node installs them per project that has the trade-off of like, you end up reinstalling the same things over and over and over again. But um, for reasons that are probably a little beyond the scope of this lesson, I think this is a way better way to do this. Public is stuff that is just gonna get copied over more or less as is um, when you actually build out this app. So stuff like um, images, Lots of like uh, just files that you want to be a part of this end up going over here. And this is actually where our index.html file ends up going. You don't really need to do much of anything with this. Um, the Cre Create React app will do things like swap out this public URL. It'll put your app in here. So we don't need to touch that too much. Uh, this is all the stuff that's going to get built into our app. And then these are our dependencies and that's our readme. So within the stuff that's going to get built into our app, um, we've got the gerbil script file, CSS file, test file for something. That's just an example of how we could do that. Um, this is like, it's uh, setting up uh, our testing framework for us. It's showing how we can also put things like images here and import them into our templates and use them there. And this index.js, um, this is called a bootstrapper. So, oops, that's the CSS. 
Nope. My wife's making me do that. So this is what's uh, starting your app. Also not something that we uh, immediately need to do anything with. Most of our action is focused on this app.js file. So one of the first things that I do when I'm setting up a React app is I blow out the boilerplate. So like, I don't need any of this. I can just start with that and that's fine. And then since I got rid of that, I also don't need this logo. Cool, so I like to start there and um, easiest way to do what we just did is if I go over to chat and pull up this HTML, I worked with an Australian lady once who would say things like, don't tell me to how to do HTML. Hi, no, H HTML, to really lean into it. We can put that whole thing in there. Now, the index.html, that's already taken care of the body and the head and all that kind of stuff. So we don't need that part. We can take that out. And, and the doc type. So the simplest answer to our thing is that. I noticed that a ton of you switch these over to class components. You don't have to. Uh, we have to use class components for state. If we don't have state, it doesn't need to be a class component. Changing something from a class component to a functional component, that should be like breathing to you. You just go back and forth between them all the time as something either gets state, loses state, whatever. But that's the criteria by which we would make something a class versus a functional component. Does it have state? It's not have state, this is just a list of fucking cats. All right, let's see if this looks kind of the same as our HTML page. If I do npm start, Yeah, it's centered and it like React gave me some styles and stuff for free. But by and large, that's what we were looking at. Ask me some questions about that. What about all the other bullshit that's in there with all the service workers and can we clear out? Oh, and that? the, uh, and that uh, index.js file? Yeah, or what are we uh, like, what are the things that we actually need in there, I guess? The stuff you actually need in here, I usually take the service worker out. You take both of those out. I also usually take out this like uh, index CSS as well. You need everything else in this. But if you want a, a bare bones operation, that's it. So create React app, is that something we have to install on our own? Uh, the create React app? Uh -huh. Yes, absolutely. So if you don't have that, then it's npm install dash g create dash react dash app. And then to make a react app, you wait for it, create react app, whatever your app is called. So it's kind of like um, Rails new, except it doesn't have generators or any of the other like cool stuff that we get with Rails. It's just that one command but we get it for free. Cool. Other questions about this? Can I see that installation command? Yep, absolutely. 
absolutely. npm install dash g create dash react dash app. You are globally installing the create react app npm package, which means you can just run something by typing create react app. Other questions? When you run create react app, does it npm install for you or do you have to do that in addition to? It, it runs your npm install, it does everything. Is that whole page JSX or only the part that's inside the return? That's a great question. Only the part that's inside the return. This is JSX, the rest of it is React. JSX is a templating language. It's kind of like ERB. Uh, I know we didn't spend any time on it, but it's what e like what ERB is in Rails. Same kind of thing. So you said the difference in terms of choosing whether to use a functional component or a class component is whether or not it has state? Correct. So if we're only using props, it would be a functional component. Correct. And the point of hooks is to we... use state and functional? And the point of hooks is to be able to do state yeah. within functional. Okay. Exactly. Because class components, well, honestly, like the class keyword in JavaScript, IMO, was a mistake. Like we should have never done this shit because it's not an object oriented language. It doesn't work the same as classes in any other language do. Uh, it's confusing. Like, it was just to appease people who were coming from other languages. Uh, and I, I think it was a massive error to put it in the language. And I think the React community broadly agrees with that. And so they've been trying to move more things to functional components. And, and hooks are like just better in a lot of other ways. So um, in a year and a half, I would be surprised if you still see class components. But you still see them all over the damn place now, so you still got to learn them. Other questions about this? Cool. So I want to do the exact same thing, um, but yours should look like this. So I'm going to put three minutes in case you got a, you're still installing uh, Create React app and what have you. Three minutes, yours should look like mine. Go. If you already like did this last time, do it again. Get fast fingers. Slack me your whole FJS file when you got it.
Kyle, you just said to get caught up with where you are, right? We're not doing something different? Correct. Okay. That's it. Cool, send me whatever you got. Hey Kyle, to kind of build on another question, um, can you write JSX without React or are they dependent on each other? Oh, that's a super good question. Uh, technically they're decoupled. You can use JSX and like view apps, for example, and you can absolutely use React without JSX. People did for like years before, um, before JSX came out. Cool, very nice. So um, let's play with this a little bit. There's other ways we could do this. Let's say um, I wanted to make cats a variable. Follow along with me. I could say something like const title equals cats, like that. And then swap this out for title, like that. Why is it mad at me? There we go. Oh, it's because I wasn't using it. That's not state, coincidentally, but I can move it over to a variable if I want to. Anybody know why that's not state? I think because it's just inputting information. It's not actually changing, um, changing information from one thing to another. Yep, I can't change it. There's no way like from JSX to like go back and change title to dogs or something. So it might be helpful for like organizing the code, but it's not the same thing as having state. So let's say I wanted to make that state. I wanted to make it something that could change. I gotta turn this into a class component. So we're gonna do this slow and careful because there's a couple steps that are the same every time and we gotta be fast at them because you're gonna do them a lot. Turning this from a function to a class, code after me. We're gonna change the function keyword to class. That's step one. Next, we're gonna get rid of the parentheses. Cool. Next, we're gonna use the extends keyword. Next, we're gonna extend React dot component, capital R, capital C. Next, classes don't return anything. So we put this return in a render method. 
like that. And this is going to return out of it like that. Uh, we can actually move, if we have a variable like that, we can actually put it in the render method. And this has gone from a functional component to a class component. That's it. What questions do you have about what we just did? Slightly unrelated question. Some people like to use double quotes, others use single quotes. Is, what is technically the difference or is there any? None in JavaScript. They are identical. They're not identical in Ruby and like a lot of other languages, but they're close. So for example, in Ruby, if you're gonna do string interpolation, it has to be in double quotes. Um, I have always been a double quotes guy. Uh, you'll take my double quotes from my cold dead hands. <laughs> Strictly speaking, you should just be consistent. And so since they're using singles there, I should probably use singles too. So for this, it doesn't matter really because perfect. it's JavaScript based? Uh, correct. This is all just JavaScript. <clears throat> so um, by the way, a like logic based reason why I think people should prefer double quotes over single quotes is you need to escape whichever one that you're not using if it just happens to come up in the string. So um, if I do something like some string equals, I put it in single quotes and I go, uh, it's Kyle's birthday. It's not, but um, you see the problem? Doesn't know like what is part of the string and what isn't. So the solution is you escape those. If you put backslashes in front of them, see how they turn different color? That's how you do that. Okay, well I use contractions all the goddamn time. Like I don't wanna have to always be on the hunt for those. Meanwhile, if I leave those as they were and change them to double quotes, now I don't have to escape that anymore. I would need to escape double quotes inside of that. I could say something like, uh, so I didn't need to escape the single quote on there. I need to escape the doubles though. It's pretty rare that I use double quotes inside of a string. I'm okay with escaping those. Contractions, apostrophes, use them all the time. I think that's a compelling reason to do, to default to doubles. The entire JavaScript world disagrees, that's not true. A lot of the JavaScript world disagrees with me, but that's why I do it that way. Other questions about anything we've done so far? Is there a uh, difference between doing extends react dot component and just doing extends component? Yes, you need to also have imported component. So if I want to do it that way, I need to bring in component from react. I think guys, a lot of you just learned about destructuring. That's not destructuring. It's the same syntax as destructuring. I think it's like one of the biggest mistakes they made with the import uh, syntax. It looks like it, that's called a named import, same syntax. But if I do that, then I can do this. And those are identical, exact same thing. Is there a preferred style in the general community or is it generally personal preference on that? I, I would use this one. Reads a little bit cleaner.
Other questions? Cool. Let's say I wanted to make title state. I want to have some way to update it, for example. Then what I do, follow along with me, state equals an object. And since this is just an object, we can do objecty kinds of things in it. Notice I didn't put const in front of this. It's not a variable. We're not in a function body. We're in a class. I am setting a property of the class. It's an instance variable. In Ruby, this is like single at. State equals title cats. Like that. Now I don't have that anymore. The thing that changes this dot state dot title. Functional components don't have this. Well, they do, but we don't use it. Class components, almost everything you do is going to start with this. You don't have to do like the constructor thing like it talks about in the Learn Labs. Nope. Um, that was uh, that was the old way to do it. So if you saw something like constructor, and then um, the like this dot state equals, and then calling super first, like all that kind of shit, you don't need to do that anymore. Um, if you don't modify a constructor for the rest of the program, you'll be fine. We got better ways to handle that now. So if you wanted to destructure state to make it so you didn't have to write as much, is that still possible? Yeah, absolutely. Let's say I just want title. Inside of this render, now I can do and destructure that out. And that's really common. Okay, there's two more things I want to show you before lunch. First thing is, um, how do we make another component? So, let's say I wanted to make each of these little cat buddies, make each of those a component. Cool. Follow along with me. We're going to go into the source folder with all those files and we're going to touch cat.js. Cool, we made a cat component. Why does it have to be capitalized? Uh, it doesn't have to be, it is by convention. It's letting us know that whatever is in this is a component. Good question. But notice that like service worker and setup tests aren't, they're not components. Yeah, I did notice that. I also think camel casing file names is like, should you try it at the Hague? <laughs> I'd much rather you do those as dasherized, but whatever, I didn't make it up. Uh, okay. Now if we open up that cat, empty file that we just made. We're going to make this a functional component. Import react 
from React. There's step one. We're going to make a function called cat. And then we're going to export default cat. This doesn't happen this way all that much. Like the grown up way to do this, just do that. It does the exact same thing. Either way. And then whatever returns from this function, that's the template. So if we do something like that, it doesn't even need to be dynamic. Every time we use the cat component, that li is going to show up. Take a sec, make sure your screen looks like mine. If I want to use this component in my app.js, I import it, just like I did with these other two things. I'm going to import cat from dot, the dot's important, slash cat. You don't need the JS. This works almost exactly like require did in Ruby. What this does is it makes a cat component available. We can use it in this template anywhere we want. So I can say cat like that. And now I have three more list items that just say hi on them. Again, your screen should look at least, least kind of like mine. You should be importing the component and then using it in this template. Cool. Now, if it just says the same thing every time, that's not too terribly useful for us right now. We want to be able to pass in the name of the cat. Anybody know how we do that? Props. Props. Give it, give it its proper's. So to do that, let's go back over to the cat component. Props is the name of the argument that gets passed into this function. If this were a class component, it'd be this.props. Same, same thing either way. It doesn't have to be only functional components that you pass into, it can be class components, doesn't matter. And then in this template, I'm gonna say props.name. So any name prop that gets passed into this cat component, it's gonna poop back an li with that name on it. Cool. Now to pass that prop in, just like this. Lynn, give me another cat name. Socks. And bangs. Thank you. <laughs> cool. Now I've made three cat components. Does it work?
차라. 과연 제가 말한 것 같아요. With the name convention and the hybridization of JSX, do you have to do double quotes for mitten socks and fangs? Nope, they're just strings. Now what you'll do way more often is pass in variables. So let's say, I saw somebody do this. They have like some cats in state. And then maybe I de even destructure those out here like I did with that one. Um, if you would like your screen to look like mine, I'll just paste it in chat. So let's say I was keeping track of those in state. So rather than hard coding these names as strings in there, then this becomes something like ah. Ah, come on, man. We put the curlies on there, and we could do something like cats zero dot name. They'll work the exact same way. Now the last thing that I wanted to show you is like, this is, what's the problem with this? this thing that I'm doing right now. If the array gets too big, you'll get an error? No, not that quite as much. It's hard to so. the length of the array that you have. Like what if yeah. you have a... Yeah, well it's three somewhere and 50 somewhere else and 150 somewhere else. It's not dynamic. It doesn't change with the size of the array. That's kind of whack. So this is probably going to be the first mind blower in, uh, in React. You will get used to this, I promise. What I really want to do is take an array of cats, cat objects, and turn them into an array of JSX elements. <laughs> Do I have a special tool that maybe helps me with that? A map. Map. I can map over that state. Um, so I could do something like And if, I, if what I return out of this function is a JSX element, then I can use it just like JSX. So I return cat name, cat dot name, like that. And then this becomes cats. Oh, like it will bark at you if you do this though. 
anytime you iterate over something in JSX, it needs to, needs to, needs to have a key. The key can be any unique value. So like, there's no cats with the same name on here. So like, that'll work. Needs to be a unique value though. So a key, is it like an ID then? Exactly. And an ID, if you have one, is always what you should use for that. So like, if I put IDs on these, like that, then that would be that. Something to uniquely identify it. Um, the React engine needs this to work as fast as it does. It does magic under the hood. And for what it's worth, so does Vue, so does Ember, so does Angular. All of them have this same concept. Is there a reason you would do that there instead of doing the map in the cat.js file? The syntax is a little bit cleaner. Um, so the other thing that you could do, oh, sorry, well, wait, uh, say the, the question again. I might've misunderstood that. So I'm wondering why you're doing your map inside of the app render instead of doing it oh. like in the cats.js component or cat.js component. Ah. So what I could also do, that's a great question. So I could do this here or check this out. Don't follow along with this. I can make a cats JS component and I could say import react from react export default cats plural that takes in props and returns um, so we'll take those things out of here put that in here and now this is going to be instead of cats it'll be props.cats so if you pass some cats into me, I'll turn those into cat things. And then I just return uh, ul cats like that. So why is this mad at me? Unexpected token. Ah, export default function cats. And then I need to, now cat is no longer needed here. So I take that out of that one and bring it into here. And instead, I import cats plural over here. And then this becomes uh, cats, plural, and the cats that I pass in are the ones from state. That's totally legit. But it's useful to have a separate cat and cats component. So your cat and your cat's component, is that like similar at all to like an index method and like a show method? Or am I drawing totally? Yeah, I guess this would kind of be like my index. Okay. And yeah, I guess that would kind of be like a show. That's not too far off. It's kind of more though like cats is like the container element, right? Oh, okay. That makes more sense. Now it's not the same as a, when we talk about presentational components and container components in React, that's a totally different idea. 
but it is literally a container for multiple instances of another okay. component. Presentation and container are different things, though. What is a presentation container? Something that doesn't have state. The, the idea behind that pattern is you try to have your presentation, which is as dumb as possible. When we talk about dumb, we mean not having state. You want to make all, as much as we can in there and then a container that just has the state and passes that into a presentational component. State's the most complicated part of any app. That's just a fact. So if we can isolate it, it makes it easier to work with. If the things from this are the only thing that you can do, like by the end of the week, probably you're like not in terrible shape. Practice this up, get fast at all of these things. The only other stuff that we really have to do in mod four is forms, events, conditionals. This is the opposite of mod two. Mod two is a billion things and we go an inch deep on them. This is four things and we spend three weeks talking about them. Be patient with yourself. You're going through this. There has yet to be a student who like two or three days in goes, ah, cool, I get React now. It's like, that doesn't happen. It just takes a lot of practice. Questions before we wrap? Is your three o'clock gonna be basically the same? Yep. So if you wanna go through this again, I'll see you at three. Toodaloo-hoo.